So now we're going to show you the second kind of system they have here. This is a system that actually uh, uh, drains out the water and actually drains it fairly fast so that the uh, roots are not staying wet because most plants do not like their roots wet. They will succumb to root rot, possibly other diseases if you do that. And that's all made possible with this guy right here. It's actually called a bell siphon. And how this works is very simple. We're going to go ahead and give you guys a close-up to show you exactly how this works. All right, so how this system works is we got a grow bed with all the little cinders in here. And then they got this little um, kind of mesh thing that does not allow the cinders to go in. And then they have their overflow tube, much like the other overflow tube in the lettuce bed. So when the water level that's getting pumped into this bed gets high enough, which is almost there now, what's going to happen is the water level is going up. And if we look, pull this, these rocks back here... You can see the water level right here is getting higher and higher and higher. And if uh, we just let it get this high and go into the overflow tube, which it's almost going to reach in a minute, it's always going to stay at that level. Now, this is what happens exactly in the lettuce bed. The water level always stays at a certain level. And it's almost overflowing now. And it's just about overflowing now. So check it out. You can see the water running over the top. Um, into the tube there, which then returns the water to the, uh, the fish tank down below. And, uh, and now you have the water always at this constant level. So what this guy does, which is the uh, bell siphon valve, it basically creates a vacuum or a suction uh, to pull the water faster than it would just normally drain out. So, for example, the water is draining out here, but it's never going to go below this exact level that you're seeing. Now, this is the standard... Uh, bell siphon that they offer here just looks like that it's basically some pvc with a cap on the top and they put some little holes on the bottom you know in a nice shape but actually they have a cool one which is for display purposes only which actually has a clear top on it so i don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put this guy over the drain tube and once again it has cutouts on the bottom we're going to put that over the top and I don't know if you guys could look in there, but what's happening is this is creating a massive suction. Look at this water draining out very quickly, right? This water is draining out very quickly, so now the roots are not sitting in a constant water supply so that they will not get the root dry. And it's a special siphon that siphons the water out until it's all siphoned out. And then, basically, it'll slowly fill up again until it's full. When it gets full again, then it siphons all the water out fast again. So this way you're getting a basically a, a drain and flow without any additional um, appliances or electricity or anything. It's all happening on suction. This is definitely an ingenious way to uh, make this happen. And then it's just kind of cool to look at the, uh, the water as it's working in there and see, like, if it's sucking or if it's filling or if there's air bubbles or it's sucking air or what, man. Definitely so cool. Let's go ahead and fill this guy back up so this can continue to work uh, how it should. So you guys just learn what you can grow, then you learn how to do it or the two ways you can accomplish this. Next, I want to get in more to the nitty-gritty, the bare bones of how the aquaponic system works. It's actually fairly simple, but yet complex on some level. So pay attention to this part. It's probably the most important part of this video, in my opinion. So as you guys know, like what happens is the, you feed the fish, the fish poop, they make the poop, it's then pumped up through and then uh, put into the top here so that it can filter down <laughs> components of the system. Number one is they got a very simple screen here. So this screen catches all the solid waste. You know, we don't want that solid waste going into the gravel bed, kind of get all funky and stuff like that, right? You can then take the solid waste, and this is solid fish poo. Yeah! Actually, just kidding, doesn't stink. But uh, this is solid fish that you could wash this out. I'd probably put it in your garden and use it as a fertilizer. So this is going to catch all that stuff. Now, the non-solids then are going into the cinder bed. And what happens is the plants just don't absorb those, uh, you know, nutrients directly. There's a middleman involved. You know, when buying things, I like to cut out the middleman whenever possible. But in this system, I'm afraid you cannot cut out the middleman or the system will not work and it'll crash. So the thing that you'll need to know for this system to work is, and the middlemen, what they are, are in this bottle here to jumpstart the system. Now, the, the middlemen will occur naturally, uh, but by jumpstarting the system, you're guaranteed a system that's going to work more effectively and work right the first time. This is actually simply called the organic digester. So this product reduces the ammonia, phosphate, nitrites, and nitrates actually in there. And they do this by a very special way. 
using beneficial microbes, so bacteria and enzymes will break down the bad stuff in the fish poop and make it bioavailable for the plants to absorb. So without this critical component that will also occur naturally if you don't want to add it like this, uh, you know, your aquaponic system can work properly and flourish. Uh, the other thing that's very important is the medium. So they got the cinder here, and you know, the cinder, if you look at that closely, kind of looks like a sponge. There's all different cracks and crevices. So this gives the bacteria and the microbes a place to live in this system so that they can flourish and break down the solids from the fish to make it plant absorbable. So yeah, and as you guys know that have been watching me for a while, I'm really into the microbes and beneficial fungi and bacteria, and that is truly what makes the aquaponics possible. But if you're also a home gardener in the ground, it also makes a standard garden in your ground possible and will thrive as well. So now that you guys learned how this system works, let's talk about the inputs required to grow the fish and all your plants. Basically, what you need to do is you need to feed the fish so that they can create their uh, biosolids or their poop to feed your plants. Plus, you need to have the bacteria. So all these things are pretty much a one-time investment. Once you've got all those guys growing, going, you're only going to need to buy about three additional things to keep your system going. Number one, you're going to need the fish food, of course. So, you know, the fish pellets, they're maybe $33 for about 40 pounds of food at this time in bulk. And I always encourage you guys to buy it in bulk for the uh, best price. And uh, you're literally just going to take some and you're going to feed the fish. We're going to throw a little bit of it out there and check it out. They're eating back there. But, uh, you know, so the fish food is all you're going to need to keep the fish happy so that they create their poop and their pee because they are living in water, so you're not going to need to provide that. But the few other things you will need are, number one, you're going to need what's in this little bag here. And uh, what's in this bag is some special stuff. And let's go ahead and put the bag back in there for you guys. But what's in the bag is this stuff right here. This is actually oyster shell. So it's often used oyster shell for like calcium for gardening. But what this is, this is a pH balancer. So you could use the oyster shells, which acts as the pH balancer that the fish have the right, you know, uh, pH to live in properly. Another thing you may need, depending on where you live, are heaters. The tilapia like to grow and live in the temperature that Hawaii is naturally. So you do not need any additional heating in Hawaii, but other places in the country, you may need to actually use heaters to keep your water warm enough or your fish are not going to do well, they're not going to grow fast, and they're not going to make it at all. Another thing you will probably need here, and what they recommend at this aquaponic place, is the uh, iron chelate. So the iron chelate helps keep your foliage green. It's a nutrient that is not provided by the fish food that will uh, encourage and ensure your plants are healthy. Now, the other thing I personally would experiment with that they're not yet doing here, and hopefully one day they will, is the rock dust minerals. I would experiment with the aquaponics and adding rock dust minerals, which will add 70 plus different trace minerals into the water, which will also give nutrition and provide nutrition for your fish, but also more importantly for the plants, you know, and, and for them. And so uh, the plants and the fish that have more minerals are going to be healthier when they're more healthy. They're going to grow bigger, grow larger. They're also going to be more, more bug and disease resistant uh, in the case of the plants and probably disease resistant and have a stronger immune system in the case of the fish. So I don't know exactly how much of that stuff to add, uh, but it can be done because I have heard about people doing it before. And I would highly encourage you guys to look into that and add some rock dust, even in small amounts, to add some of those trace minerals. Uh, back into your system so that you can grow some of the most nutritious food ever. So now that you guys know how this system works, we're going to explain the anatomy of the system or the parts that you need to do it. And, you know, here at the aquaponics place, they'll supply you with everything you need, including the plants and the fish and the containers and the pumps and everything to do that. And as you guys can see behind me, there's a standard system behind me. Now, the system prices can range in a couple hundred dollars to a thousand or more dollars, depending on how large you want your system. Of course, I would always encourage you guys to buy the biggest system as possible, because the biggest system that you can buy will produce more fish and more greens for you to eat faster, just in case you need to eat out of your garden exclusively and not the grocery store. So it's really simple. These systems work. you got two uh, big uh, tanks. you got the bottom tank, which is where the fish live. And then you basically got some uh, 
concrete block that they stack up to make like legs, like a table. Then they have basically a two by four wooden frame that supports the grow bed up top. They have the bed up top that fill it with a cinder and you plant your plants. I mean, really, aquaponics is really that simple. Now, whether you buy a constructed setup like this, which is all looking nice and professional, or whether you get a standard, what's called an IBC toad on Craigslist for $100, $200, depending on where you live, and cut it down, it's really that easy to do an aquaponic system. Even if you're renting, have a condo, or, you know, don't have land or in-ground space, an aquaponic system is an excellent uh, way to use some of the extra space that you have. And exciting episode for you and we're here in Hawaii on Oahu actually and today we have a special episode for you guys all about aquaponics man I mean